Asky Airlines, the Pan African Airlines. Hunt à vous. Pourquoi avez-vous mis un homme innocent en prison? Pourquoi? Dis-moi, s'il vous plaît. Hey folks, I'm Mr. Lee G, the artist, also known as Leroy Griffith Jr., the humanitarian. You know, I've been to Africa on countless occasions because of my charity, A Time to Give Back to Africa. And we have been doing charity work in Mali, Bamako. We work with a soccer team there. We also work with some of the young folks there in Bamako and Lhasa. And we also support a, a soccer team in Nigeria. So uh, on this last trip that I just made to Africa, on my trip from Nigeria back to the States, I had to stop in Lome, Togo. That was where I was going to get my connecting flight, leaving Nigeria. Where? Togo, Togo, Togo. Oh my God, Togo. Right now for me, it's a no-go. This lady here, which is in charge of the airport and Askai Airlines in Togo, detained me. She took my passport and caused me to miss my connecting flight. Now check this out. I got to Togo. She takes my passport. She goes to the back. My airline, Ethiopian Airlines, is calling my name, Leroy Griffith, because they're boarding. I'm asking, ma'am, why are you detaining my passport and causing me to miss my flight? They're actually calling my name. Well, that went without an answer. You know, uh, I followed her and, and, and I'm like, ma'am, what's your name? Can you tell me your name? Because you have my passport, you know, and here I am in a, a foreign country, you know, without my passport and they're calling me to board my flight and she's not giving me my passport. Anyway, she speaks very well French and English. And her only answer would be, sit down. So here I am, you know, in Togo, Lome, sitting in the waiting area as I watch my flight leave with my luggage to New York City, JFK. <laughs> but as frustrated as I am, I still remain calm, you know. My mom always say, you have to be calm when your hand is in the lion's mouth. So, you know, I'm in her country, you know. I speak a little French, I mean, she has my passport and no answer. Eventually, she placed me in the hands of the immigration and there they, again, I'm asking questions. I'm like, why am I being detained? You know, why, why are you guys holding me here? You caused me to miss my flight. What's the problem? Please, somebody explain something to me. Again, no answer. This went on for a few hours until the police eventually came to the to the airport well once the police got there i then asked the police am i being arrested and if so what am i being arrested for again my questions went unanswered and they actually laughed you know and was like yes yeah <laughs> and they laugh and you know it's like it's a joke you know all right eventually they decided to take me and a few other uh passengers to the precinct yeah in the car they just arrested us the police here in togo like we did something wrong me and these other americans here we being uh, uh, detained, you know, for no reason. And they're trying to send me back to Bamako and I'm an American, you understand? So, you know, we are watching the see what is going on here. You know, it's very, very sad. Now, mind you, thank God I had Wi-Fi because I was connected to the Wi-Fi all along whilst I'm in the airport going through all this drama keeping in touch with my manager here in the States, letting her know what's going on as it 
proceeds, you know, everything as it takes place, I'm letting her know what's going on. You know, I'm taking pictures, I'm sending it to her as well. You know, I'm letting her know everything that's going on while I'm there in Lome. Eventually, again, the police officers, they took us to this car and took us to the precinct where we were detained. Okay, I'll show you some footage here. And I took this footage while we were going on my phone, you know, just to keep a, a, a record of, of everything that's taken place. I got to the precinct, they took all our stuff. They told me to take off my belt, my sneakers, my socks. Right now we're being detained in this precinct right here. Me and these three other Americans, they're treating us like criminals. No water, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Look, and when we ask, they're making a big joke about everything. They're not even listening to us. It's really messed up. Can't wait to get out of here. And then they searched us and then they took us into the prison. Wow. What an experience. What an experience. Now, mind you, I'm a humanitarian. I'm in Africa doing work, helping folks. And here I am being locked up in a prison. And I don't even know why, what it is I've done. So now I'm, they put us in this prison, I'm talking about filled with feces, urine on the floor. And mind you, I don't even have sneakers or socks on, you know, and I have to stand in that and sit in that and later lay down in that, you know. The night went by really slow. I couldn't wait for the morning. Now, mind you, while we are in the prison cell, I'm asking for water. It's like, officer, monsieur, s'il vous plaît, j'ai besoin de l'eau pour prendre mes médicaments. I'm letting them know I need water to take my, my, my tablet, which is a malarone for malaria. I have to take one of those every day while I'm in Africa. They ignored me. They actually laughed and said, oh, tu parles français? <laughs> you know, je ne comprends pas. They don't understand and stuff like that, you know. Like it was a joke. Well, the morning finally came and then they took us out of the, the, the prison cell. And then they gave us back our stuff, gave me back my stuff, and they took me back to the airport. They just brought us out of the prison. One of the worst prison experiences I've ever had. You know, and we don't even know what we was arrested. Oh, you get justice. Once I got to the airport, right, uh, I realized that my manager, she reached out to some artists that live in Ghana, you know, and um, one of the artists is, uh, well, he's not an artist, he's actually a promoter. Yes, the promoter name is Samuel Amete Tiago, right? We call him the ghetto promoter. He was able to connect with my manager, and since Ghana is on the border of Togo, he was able to send his sister, okay, on a motorcycle. Her name is Satina Catherine Tome. I want to big up uh, Satina for, for coming out there on that bike late at night to get me some food and water. Now, once she got to the precinct, they didn't let her in. They didn't even allow her to give me the food and the water. I guess because she didn't have money to bribe them or something, you know, everything is like a bribe, you know, anyway, state and she told them to tell me that she came by so that I would know somebody is there for me. You know, they didn't do that. Once we got now in the morning time now, once we got to the airport where they had me also detained again. I took my phone because by this time they gave me back my phone and my, my, my belongings. And I took a picture of this woman that caused me all of this, you know, pain, you know, all of this sadness. And she heard when my phone took, took the picture, she immediately called the police officers and they came and took my phone and erased all my pictures. But thank God for my iPhone 11, 
I was able to have these photos that they deleted in a folder where I was able to retrieve it to tell my story today. You understand? Uh, the morning when I was in the airport, Satina again rode from Ghana to the airport. Once she got to the airport, they didn't want to let her into the airport so that she, she can see me. But luckily she had 5,000 sephas, I think it was. She was able to pay the police officer to let her in so that I could see that I had someone there for me. You know? Um, uh, once she got in, you know, she, she related to me that Tiago, the ghetto promoter from Ghana, is the one that sent her and that she was there prior, before, the night before. But they didn't let me know. Um... She didn't stay very long because she had to head back to Ghana. I was just really happy that she came by to give me that strength at a time when I felt like a fish out of water, you know what I mean? Uh, in a foreign country with, with no relatives or friends or stuff like that. You know, my experience in Togo was a total nightmare. And to this day and to this moment, I still don't know why I was being detained and why they did this. They thought that they erased all the pictures and I would not be able to say this or to prove this here, you know, but um, this is what happened. You know, uh, again, I'm a humanitarian and I've been going to Africa since 2011. And uh, this is the first time having an experience like this, you know, uh, never been through Togo before and I've never flown with a sky airlines before but um this was definitely a terrible experience and i want folks to know what happened you know and maybe you can give me also an explanation why you did this to me is it because of the dreadlocks and you profiled me and you think that i'm a criminal because that's how i was treated like a criminal you know um it's really disturbing you know, I'm a person involved with media and stuff, and I'm asking myself, why did this happen to me? And I think the reason why it happened to me is so that I can bring light to it and let folks know exactly what's going on in Togo. Lome, this woman right here that I'm showing you is the one that created all of this. And she seems to be some kind of a boss. You know, everyone just listens and do whatever she says, you know. Um... Yeah, and that's my story, you know. Uh, yeah. I hope this doesn't have to happen to anybody else out there. You know. Again, I'm Mr. Liji, also a humanitarian for a time to get back to Africa. And, you know, Rasta is positive. <laughs> All right. One love.